Mexican authorities have captured the top leader of a major drug cartel who has been wanted for years. Notorious boss of leading cartel, the Templar Knights, or Caballeros Templarios, Servando Gomez Martinez, also known as La Tuta, was arrested in the state of Michoacán in the southwest of the country. Servando Gomez, also known as La Tuta for his background as a school teacher, was reportedly captured on Friday in the city of Morelia. He's now transferred to Mexico City to a high security uh, prison, and he's been wanting in both the US and Mexico and they had rewards for over $2 million, $2 million for his capture. Martinez is known as the leader of the biggest and one of the most violent cartels in later years. His drug gang has been involved in kidnapping, drug trade, and specifically of cocaine and methamphetamines. Nick, this is, this is very, very important because this comes right after the killing of 43 teachers uh, that nobody knew exactly what happened for many, many months. They, they were killed by, allegedly, by the violence from the cartels. And the president of Mexico, Peña Nieto, was very, very, uh, he was under fire by the community at large in the world mm -hmm. because he didn't took any decisive action. And then after that, a lot of um, issues came to, to the light about, you know, corruption, about his connection to, to business, people that were doing, you know, shady business in Mexico. So he was under a lot of fire, and suddenly, magically, they captured the most wanted drug lord that they were looking for. Coincidence? Very coincidental. And it's not the first time it happened. Every time a president in Mexico is under fire, suddenly and magically they find the guy who they were looking for for the last few years. Mm. Uh, it's not to say that it's good that they're doing something against the, the narcs and they're doing something against drug trafficking at all, but I think that they're doing a lip service and they're saving face to the bigger problem in Mexico that is corruption. Just a, a little backstory on how this came to be this big war against the, the drug cartels happened two presidents ago when Vicente Fox was a president. Um, there was kind of like this agreement that as long as they did their business and they didn't took innocent lives, you know, they, were, they won't be like a direct attack versus them. Mm -hmm. Then the next president came uh, Felipe Calderón, and Felipe Calderón decided to do a frontal war against the drugs, uh, and that, as we all know, created 100,000 deaths. Uh, people felt like the country was out of control because suddenly you had cartels fighting cartels and taking innocent lives in the process. Um, what do you think? I think this, this, is, this is good in the sense that we are capturing one of the most wanted, but are we really doing any progress by, by capturing no, they're, they're, these guys? they're capturing them when they need them. They're using them as scapegoats. Uh, when he's under a fire, then all of a sudden, whoops, we found him. It's not a coincidence. I mean, it kind of lets us know that if they really wanted to, they could take these guys out whenever they wanted. And it's not as probably not as difficult as they make it seem. I'm not saying that it's easy for these presidents to go out and catch these big-time drug lords, but they keep them there to use them when they need them. And when they're in hot water... They use these guys to pull them out. And one of the things that you know, strikes me is that every time they capture one of these guys, it's without incident. Yeah. Suddenly they surrender, and you know, there's, no, there's no wounds, there's no fighting. They just decide to give up, which before, every time they were trying to get someone of this, of, of this caliber, there was a big, big gunfight for them. You know, some of them will be proud to say that they will die fighting. But there's something different about La Tuta. La Tuta became very, very famous and popular uh, on, on social media because he was very outspoken. Mm -hmm. He was one of the few drug lords that didn't want to hide, hide or, or you know, play, play low. He will go online, he will make YouTube videos saying that he was doing this because it was a necessary evil. What, what he meant is that the level of corruption in the country was so insane, that he was doing a service for the most poor populations that he encountered in, in that area, in Michoacán, which is a very poor country. So he started out as a school teacher, a great school teacher, and just growing marijuana and, and smuggling, you know, small-time 
and you know smuggling like all teachers do you know because he it's a very poor country and then what happens when you have a very poor country and people don't have options they turn to crime to supplement their income so he he became notorious he joined a gang called la familia that was very 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 uh violent and and committed one of the most violent crimes that we can see them on the screen and he ended up being one of the few that didn't get caught so that gang kind of broke apart because of they captured most of them and then he moved on and did his own uh, new cartel called Caballeros Templarios, the Night Templars, and they kind of mesh uh, a religious element to it. Oh, really? Yeah, and they had like, they, they will pray and they will say that they, they, they try to be kind of a Robin Hood-esque type of organization where they will try to build hospitals to the community, not hospitals, but at least, you know, community clinics and schools for the families of the people who was working on the cartels. Here we fast forward to 10 years after he was a direct uh, critic of the government and now he gets captured. He gets frog march in front of all the media and they make a big parade that he was captured and now he is on, you know, at a high security prison in Mexico City. Uh, but at the same time, what I don't think that's going to change anything. No on the everyday life and the insecurity that happens in Mexico. No, it's like you, we can paint him right now as a good guy Robin Hood figure, yeah. right? But he Building killed schools, a bunch of people. Being, but it's like you can't be a successful drug dealer without, you know, without the, the killings and the kidnappings, and I'm sure they're all on drugs anyways. I mean, look at the armada they got. Look at yeah. the guns. Those aren't to scare people into building no, they hospitals. Are, they are so they're, they're using those guns. It's sad that somebody, you know, had to go from being a teacher, making an honest living, to... Resorting to drug dealing, yeah. which is sad. Um, they don't pay teachers enough in this country, let alone in Mexico. So it's sad, and we're not, so I don't know. A lot of things to be said about that, but like I said, it, he's not you know the good guy that he's trying to portray himself as. Although I'm sure he did do you know a lot of good good things. Let's let's say that we're not condoning what he did. He did heal a lot of innocent lives, but at the same time, he had a intellectual line. At least he claimed to have. But we want to know what do you think? Do you think that really the Mexican government is doing something to change the corruption and the drug problem that it's infecting the country? Or are they just saving face by doing the right theater when they capture the right people at the right time? Let us know what you think in the comments and subscribe to the Lib TV.